Hey friends! So at long last, those of you who have been fans of the modular synthesis world are probably already aware, but VCV Rack 2 and VCV Rack Pro are finally here. The standalone version of VCV Rack is 100% free, so if you've been modular curious, this is a great time to get in. There are many virtual modular solutions out there, such as Reactor Blocks, Softube, Odulus, Bitwig, and more, but VCV Rack benefits from a giant library of modules, a very active community, and a strong development team. And best of all, it's now available as a VST plugin that you can use and tie in with Ableton or whatever DAW you like. This video is going to kind of serve as an introduction to the VCV Rack universe and what some of the amazing things you can do with it are and how it integrates with DAWs. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in live and here is the patch that I've created in VCV Rack. The whole thing sounds like this. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of break this down. I have three separate kind of things going on at once, and I kind of want to break this down so you can see what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to listen to the drums. And as you can see, I've got some various modules here and some various connections going on. This may seem complicated, but in all honesty, this is actually a really small patch versus what is possible. I mean, there could be as many as, you know, 300 modules all interacting with each other. And that's kind of what the fun is about this. A lot of what happens when you're working with modular are happy accidents, and these can be inspiring things, okay? So let's go ahead and listen to just the drums. So the first thing I want to go over is this MIDI to CV. As you can see right now, we have two different clock outputs, okay? So what happens is, is you can run a clock from your DAW. See how you have a drop-down menu? You can choose whatever MIDI devices you have running at this time, and you can clock VCV Rack with it. VCV Rack, um, as the effects unit, is sitting inside of a track. Now, at the moment, for some reason, I can't get as much MIDI connectivity with the normal VCV Rack plugin as I get with the VCV Rack 2 effects plugin, okay? Now, you can also run this completely standalone, and that's the free version of this, so you can kind of get into the universe. But the first thing we have here is this MIDI to CV, and we're using Ableton's clock to drive all of the things that have a clock connection. So we can see that we have a clock going to both of these marbles. This is a Mutable Instruments physical module that exists in the real world. This is a very popular module for creating random events to happen, okay? So in this case, both of these marbles, okay, are sending gate signals to this gate to MIDI effect. Now this module is sending notes, MIDI notes, to Ableton. And so we can see here, this drum rack right here is going to correlate with the inputs coming into these different notes. You can see C2, C sharp 2, and D2. As I play this, this is going to be playing into this drum rack down here. And so I'll go ahead and play this again. We can see those MIDI notes coming in there. Let's go back to VCV rack. Now you might be like, okay, well, what's the advantage here, man? Like, why should I care about using a random sampler or using any modules to drive a drum rack in Ableton. What are the advantages? Essentially, what I want to show you here is that there are advantages to using modular in order to do things that Ableton just can't do. And one of the things that the Marbles random sampler can do that I really haven't found in many other samplers is its ability to use kind of a Turing machine style locking of the sequence, as well as this jitter control. So let's go ahead and look at this jitter control. What jitter will do is it will add random time fluctuations to how the beat goes, and it'll add swank and swagger to your beats in ways that nothing else really does. I love this, this command. It's so much fun to do. So let's go ahead and we're going to listen to, we're going to go ahead and isolate the first three samples here. So I'm just going to go ahead and mute these other ones. We're just going to listen to the drums that the first random sampler is working with. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to this. So we hear that we have a kick drum, a hi-hat, and a snare drum. And at the moment, this beat is kind of really boring. But if I start to turn up this jitter control, take a listen to what happens. And as you can hear, that's not just normal swing. We've got all kinds of wacky stuff going on there. And if I ever have something that I like, I can turn this loop length all the way down to one and just lock this in. Notice how it's now repeating that one specific section, right? The jitter control still works after that's been locked. 
I could maybe open this up to two, let it run again. Right? So you can get all kinds of really unique action going on there with that jitter control and the, the being able to lock the sequence in, right? And still be able to jam with it, right? That's one way to use it. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unmute the other drums that I have here, just these, these two drums right here. And those are being fed from another marbles and they're doing these crazy uh, kind of ratchet sounds where they're repeating the, the note hits very quickly and kind of adding like a glitchy element to my drums. Take a listen now. You can hear them kind of bouncing around your head, just this weird glitchy kind of thing. Now, what I've got going on here is I'm running these into a Bernoulli gate. I don't know if I'm butchering the name of that, but essentially if I turn the knob this way, I'll get more of those ratchets. Right? And if I turn the knob the other way, I will be sending gates out that aren't being routed to anything, so I'll get less of those repeats. Right, so this is just kind of a fun way to get some extra wackiness going on in your beats. So I'm going to turn the jitter control back down. And let's go ahead and add the second element. So the second element here is this bass. Now this bass is being ran by a what's called the macro oscillator too. This is uh, Platts. This is another mutable instruments uh, module. And mutable instruments modules, all of them are available in the VCV rack world. And they are probably the most popular, some of the most popular modules available on this platform. And they are super awesome. The macro oscillator has so many different modes in it. But what I, what I have it, the mode I have it on now is just this random wavetable mode. And what's happening is I'm sending a bunch of LFO signals into this to kind of navigate the wavetable. Now, what's the advantage here? Well, instead of me, you know, working with Ableton Wavetable and really trying to dial in a specific sound, I'm just letting the LFO kind of navigate through the wavetables, as well as you can see, there's another LFO going up into this one. And these are just navigating this random wavetable here, and we're making all these different random sounds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and mute this, and you can hear just the incredible amount of different sounds that are gonna come out of this one oscillator. Take a listen. Now this might sound like kind of basic, right? But these are building blocks for an eventual composition, right? The idea with modular, and I think a way to use modular in a way that you can actually create music <laughs> and go somewhere with it instead of just play around with it as if it was a toy, is to get a setup like this and go ahead and then record it, okay? Record the output of it, right? And then what you can do with the output is you can then choose your favorite sounds that you made and then assemble them into a composition, right? All that this is, all that I'm setting myself up for is to be able to record this patch linearly, right? And then grab my favorite parts of it and assemble a tune out of it. That's kind of my earth cry workflow for my own music that I make myself. I'm almost always starting with a modular patch and then taking various elements of it and assembling a song out of it, right? Okay. So what you can see also is that we're using output three from VCV rack. And so what I want to show you is that this random wavetable thing that I'm doing is being sent into a VCA and that's being sent into, you can see this audio plugin right here, or this audio module is being sent out to three and four. So another really cool thing about VCV rack is that you can set up incredibly complex giant patches and they'll all be sent to different inputs on Ableton. So you can keep each one of your elements separate, even though the patch is in one big view right here, right? Okay, so let's listen to the third one. And now the third sound is this thing. Now, this is a little bit more complex of a voice. There's a lot going on here. We have a Turing machine, which is basically Grayscale's permutation module. And if you've ever worked with a Turing machine before, there's Turing machines in like pigments and other... Um, sequencers in the normal VST world, but essentially this is a really awesome thing. What, what it'll allow you to do is play a sequence and it will be unquantized, and then I'm running it into a quantizer, and you can see I've chosen C, E, uh, G, and B right here as the notes that it's going to be able to choose from, and then I'm running that into an oscillator. That oscillator is running into yet another thing that's really only available in the modular world, and that is a low pass gate. Kind of has a different sound than a filter. Okay, and that's running into a mutable instruments clouds and clouds just having clouds alone available to you in this format 
is this is such a powerful musical tool in every way. What Clouds is doing at this point is it's kind of messing with the size of the grains that I'm getting. It's a granular synthesizer, essentially, that also has a reverb built in. So it's adding reverb, random amounts of reverb, random amounts of grain size shifting, and a little bit of freeze. And eventually it's all just making it to this output right here, and I'm coming down one and two. So take a listen to this. Now you might hear every once in a while, it sounds like the random grain or the sample is going up in pitch. Well, that's actually, that actually is what's happening, and I want to show you the next thing, and that's that this is just so amazing, y'all. You can actually go in and make clips, okay, and then these clips can automate, or automation in arrangement view. You can also do this in arrangement view. But essentially what's going on is you can have these clips, and these clips can change various aspects in VCV Rack, okay? So, for example, what I'm doing right now is I'm automating the pitch, uh, feature here. So you can see I've got some automation. Let's go ahead and take a, lis a listen and a look at what's happening when I play this clip. Now hopefully some of you that have been in modular for a long time recognize the power here. Now what's amazing about this is that Ableton's clock is driving this patch, okay? And then what I'm able to do is I'm able to actually write automation into clips or into arrangement view to get some changes happening and get some serious control over these modules. Basically, any of these knobs in any of these modules, I can actually write automation to. So let's go ahead and do something else. Let's write some new modulation. Let's go ahead and we'll go to the offset, okay, of this quantizer. Now what the quantizer is doing is it's receiving a signal, okay, it's receiving this quote unquote voltage right, from the permutation, and then it's taking it and it's only choosing these four notes. But you can offset that that initial pitch, and what that'll do is that'll make some musical variations that will still be in key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this control, and as you can see, pre-offset has appeared in Ableton. So now what I can do is I can go in here and I can say, all right, in this clip, we're gonna offset these notes every once in a while. Maybe we'll offset like this and like this, and everything that I do is still gonna be in key. Maybe I'll offset these up higher. Take a listen now. And so now we've got this interesting musical idea that's happening, and in the spirit of modular, let's go ahead and make this actually a little bit shorter. In the spirit of modular, the reason I call that the spirit of modular is that at this moment, this clip is exactly 4-4 four, four timing, and it is repeating every 4. In modular, it's very common for people to take sequencers and make them not run exactly on 4x4 four four divisions, right? And so what this can do is it can make it so that this patch won't repeat exactly the same way every time. All right, so now I'm going to unsolo this. We're going to listen to the whole patch, and now you can kind of see how it's all working together. <laughs> So I just want to point out a couple quick things while we're here. So if you look at the VCV Rack website, you can see that there is just a giant amount of modules available. The list truly never ends, and they're constantly being developed. And now that VCV Rack 2 is out with the plugin support, I'm telling y'all, this is just going to blow up. Okay, there's everybody is making sort of digital copies of modules that exist in the physical world. Okay, and you can also tie in your actual physical modular synthesizer with VCV Rack and send audio and CV control back and forth between them. You can get really granular with this stuff. It is unbelievably fun and it's awesome. And honestly, it's now affordable for anybody. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, like VCV Rack, you know, we're, we're talking about a lot of analog modules here. Well, I just got to say something. A lot of modules in modular synthesis, in the physical modular synthesis world, they're actually digital. A lot of people don't understand that. They look at a modular synth and they think this entire thing is analog. It's sending analog voltage, yes, between each module, but a lot of the mutable instrument stuff, uh, noise engineering especially, one of, the, one of the, my favorite uh, makers of modules is noise engineering, and almost all of their modules are digital, okay? So there's a lot of advantages there. 
And so a lot of those copies of those modules in the digital universe, in the physical universe, are actually just one by one digital copies inside of VCV rack and the other virtual modular solutions that are out there. So you're not really losing sound quality. And if you ever get to the degree where you feel like you actually are losing sound quality, I want to show you something else that's truly amazing. And that's that VCV rack, <laughs> this is so crazy. VCV rack right now is running at this really low sample rate, uh, 44.1 classic sample rate, but you can upsample this all the way up to an insane 768 kilohertz, okay? If I did this right now, my computer would probably explode, and I would open up a vacuum into time space and suck everybody watching this video into it, but for now, I'm going to leave it at 44.1, but if you're ever worried about you getting aliasing or, you know, kind of not sounding as good as the physical digital modules that are out there. I'm sorry, you can overclock this thing so high that you might even get higher quality from the digital modules in the virtual realm than you would in the physical realm because there's no physical limitations really when it comes to computers. And this brings me to something else I want to say. The VST version of VCV rack has to be ran in an Intel version of Ableton. So those of you that have the new Mac computers, you're going to have to make sure that you have the, the Intel version of Ableton installed on your computer. If you look at my computer, I have not only the uh, beta, the new uh, silicon beta, but I'm also running the Ableton 11 normal suite so I can run VCV as a VST, okay? That's what's going on there. So, awesome. If there's enough interest in VCV rack and the various things that it can do, um, I'll cover a lot more of it. I mean, this is one of the frontiers of electronic music, like it or not. There's just so much development happening in this world. There's so much that you can do that you can't really do with the software itself especially in terms of granular synthesis, in terms of random, in terms of really interesting sequencing solutions. Um, I'll cover more of it if there's enough interest. I also should say that one of the most amazing channels on YouTube for VCV Rack is, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, it's Omri Cohen, or Cohen, whatever his name is. Uh, definitely follow that channel if you're interested in VCV Rack. He really, really goes in depth, and he's got a really interesting and fun voice to listen to. All right, so... If you enjoyed this and you want to support the channel, you can follow me on my Spotify. You can check out the various Ableton courses that I have on offer. And always, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.